Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create explosive barrels using only blueprints. These barrel hurt anyone from any team. And you can set their health, so you have to hit them once or twice. And yeah, so it, in your game, it'll be dangerous to stand close to the uh, explosive barrels. First of all, let's navigate to our favorite level, the Shooter Gym level. So Lyra 5.1 update actually has this very nice editor tool and it just displays, displays the common maps. So let's go ahead and navigate to the Shooter Gym. Let's do ourselves a favor and actually stop the enemies from shooting at us so we don't die so fast. So navigate to the Edit, Editor Preferences, and then under the Lyra Developer Settings, let's just go ahead and uncheck the Allow Player Bots to Attack. We'll be using the Grenade Asset as a reference and as an example. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and navigate to B underscore grenade. All right, and go ahead and open that up. Let's also find where this grenade is located to find a, a suitable spot for our explosive barrel. Okay, so we can see that the grenade is under the shooter core content and then under the weapons. So let's, let's go ahead and navigate to the shooter core content and let's make a new folder for environment blueprints. So I'll just call this one environment. And then let's just let's just make another folder for barrel because we might have more than one type of barrel. And let's go ahead and actually create our blueprint. And we'll we'll just use the actor as a parent class. So let's just call this one explosive barrel. Okay, and then let's open up that new actor and let's just put them side by side uh, because we'll, we'll essentially be using a lot of the logic from the grenade and also the same mesh as the grenade, but we'll be creating our own uh, material instance. So it actually looks like an explosive barrel. Okay, so go ahead and open the full blueprint editor because we'll, we won't just be changing base uh, or class defaults. We'll actually be adding a mesh and adding some logic here. Uh, so for, first thing we want to do is we want to use the same mesh, but make it way better because the grenade is really small. Um, so let's just go ahead and click on the browse to the grenade uh, static mesh and we'll create in our explosive barrel a new static mesh component oh and because i have it selected it's nice it already chooses the static mesh grenade so now in our viewport we see it's right here it's really tiny so we'll actually go ahead and give it a scale of 10 and let's make sure to lock or scale so the scaling is uniform. All right, so we have a bigger uh, barrel. And now to indicate that it can be explosive, let's just change it to a red color. So let's actually let's actually get navigate to the material instance of the weapon. So click on this button. And then let's just let's just duplicate this and we'll move it inside our new folder. And that will be for the barrel uh, material instance. So let's just navigate to our barrel, click here so it opens it up in our content browser. And then copy and paste over here. And this one I will call material instance explosive barrel and it already has a parameter exposed that's that we can use for the color so let's go ahead and choose uh, the team weapon tint and let's choose a big red and it's kind of hard to uh, it, it's hard to imagine or see the the colors on the barrel without seeing it on the mesh so you can actually uh, navigate to the mesh itself. 
so I'll just oh, I'll just scroll down, browse to it. And when you have it selected in your content browser, you can actually click on this uh, button here so you can actually preview the mesh. Okay, and then let's apply this material instance to the explosive barrels material. So I, I think you can just yeah browse to it and then you can press this button to just use the selected asset from the content browser. Okay, so now our explosive barrel is red. We can go ahead and close this material instance. Uh, let, let's keep our grenade up, but let's just minimize it for now. So what we'll, we'll do next is actually give the barrel an ability system so that it can have uh, the health attribute and it can receive damage and it can also apply effects to other actors, which is pretty much how uh, pretty much how the grenade deals its damage and how it receives damage is very similar to uh, the blocks in the uh, example for the exploder so which is and the plugins and then it's under the top-down arena content yeah so if you if you want to see uh, it's, it's kind of like bomberman uh, but uh, not, not exactly called Bomberman, but it would be those those levels, and then you can blow up some some blocks. All right. So to do so, you just need to uh, open up your explosive barrel blueprint, add, and then search for ability system. Okay. So this way, this can also have abilities but we'll mostly just use it for its health. Now, important an important thing to, to mention is that we can't really use the same health component that our players have because they depend on the Lyra ability system. And you can't really add the Lyra ability system as a blueprint because it's, it's not a blueprint spawnable component. Um, so we'll, we'll just do away with that. Um, yeah, and we'll, we'll bind it in another way. So to give this uh, barrel the health set, what we can do is click on the ability system component, and then let's go ahead and add some default starting data. So what, what this will do is if this uh, attribute set doesn't exist yet on this actor, it will actually create and initialize this ability set. So this is a great way of adding uh, ability sets in blueprint because otherwise you'd have to add them in code so let's go ahead and choose the lara health set and then in as your second set it will be the combat set this one's used for calculating damage uh, and healing which we won't need for our explosive barrel but it's good. it comes as a package deal um, yeah so for for our combat set we don't really need to set any any actual data but for a health set, it will be useful to have a number so you can actually set how much how much health it has and you can control how many times you need to shoot it or to apply damage to it until it, it blows up. The, the starting attribute set table is actually just a data table. So let's just go ahead and create a new data table and let's place it with our uh, with our exploding explosive barrel. So that is under the shooter core and then environment barrel. And let's go ahead and call this one data table uh, barrel health. And then when you choose a structure, it is the attribute metadata. So similarly, you could also have the starting data on your player to set the health something other than 100, because in the code right now, it's just set to 100. So uh, whenever you don't have anything describing how much health you have, it will be by default 100. And that's also why this is fine, because it's zero and that we're okay with that. Let's open up this data data table. So how, how the attribute metadata works is you can add a row 
and then the row name is actually the attribute name. To, to find all the attribute sets that are available, uh, let's, let's just open up a gameplay effect for adding hearts, so additional hearts. This one is the one that's using the uh, exploder, uh, exploder game mode. So it's GE additional heart. And then in the modifiers, it modifies the maximum health and it adds it 100. Uh, so the attributes, you can actually see them in any uh, gameplay effect that applies modifiers. So if you click on the attribute, um, the attribute drop down, you can actually see all the available attribute sets. Uh, so what we will be using is the Lyra health set dot max health and the Lyra health set dot health, which is the current health. You won't be able to see the health attribute because it's not exposed to a modifier. So essentially the health attribute is only changed through damage and damage calculations. Uh, so, but it, it's good to know that it, it exists and you can, you can set it. It, it in the data table we just created for the barrel health. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and add these, uh, these two, the max health and the health. And let's set it to, let's say, one health. So if you shoot it once, it will die. It will explode. So its name is uh, Lyra Health Set dot Max Health. So I feel I feel like there could be a better way. I'm sure there's some there's some um, blueprint friendly uh, game playability system plugins out there. Okay, so Lyra health set dot max health. And let's add another one. Lyra health set dot health. So let's set its base value to, so, so that's for the max health. So to, let's say, 100 or something. Minimum value is 1. And yeah, maximum value is 100. And then it's health set. Let's just set it to uh, one. So you start with one health, minimum is zero, maximum, I guess it could be a hundred. So this is where you define uh, how much how much health your barrel has. So on your explosive barrel, you have your barrel health. The next step we want to do is uh, pretty much use the logic from the grenades blueprint and use it for our own purposes. Let's copy the, all the logic for the begin play and the detonate. And we'll just rename some functionality, some functions and uh, update some functionality that we don't need. So just to be clear, so these two, we don't need the event hit and we don't need the teleport grenade. Control C and then in your explosive barrel, navigate to the event graph and let's paste all of that and then for setup vfx let's create a matching function in blueprint okay and let's compile and we'll have a lot of a lot of angry errors looking at the grenades setup vfx all it does is it it spawns the trail for the grenade and it sets the team color, so we actually won't need this function at all. So navigate to your explosive barrel, and let's just go ahead and find the usages for the setup VFX, and just skip that step. So let's, you can use control click just to move it out, and let's delete this, and, and we can also delete the setup VFX function. We can use the same explosion than the other grenade. So let's uh, just right click on your material explosion and click create variable. And then this one, we want it to be the same as uh, the barrels uh, or the grenades. So let's see what they have for that value. All right, so it's actually using what looks like a flip book of pyro grenades. So let's just copy that over and paste. 
So this just gets it ready to be used. I don't know all the details of this function. Okay, we can actually delete pretty much everything in the begin play except for the set four snip levels to be resident. So good day, goodbye, these things. All right. But what we will actually be waiting for is when the health reaches zero. So it would be nice to be able to use the health component here and just bind to on death or on health changed. Uh, but for our case, and to not have to do any code, we're actually going to wait for uh, a gameplay effect applied, which is when you get damaged. Okay, so let's add this node. Wait gameplay effect applied to actor. So that's uh, when the barrel will get hurt, it will have a, a gameplay effect applied to it. Uh, so let's just wait for the source tag requirement would be the, the damage. So drag that out, make gameplay requirement, and then let's just require any damage type. So I will just search for damage. Okay, so damage could be anything really. So damage type, ah, there you go. So gameplay effect, damage type. So if any of these types of damage are applied to the barrel, um, we'll be waiting for it. Okay. And so on apply, let's actually get our health uh, value. So to get your health value, you clicked on your ability system, get float attribute, from ability system component and then you can actually choose your Lyra health set oh yeah I don't think I can type that in or I didn't have focus so Lyra health set health so here we're gonna check if your health is less or equal to zero then we will trigger an explosion all right so let's actually hook in a call to detonate over here so if you don't have any health, go ahead and detonate. And then what detonate does is it does this logic once. It plays a gameplay cue on the actor, which is the explosion. It deactivates a projectile movement, which we don't actually need because we don't have a projectile movement. And it hides, it hides the grenade. So I will just, what you can do is just drag it in into this space and then it'll it'll replace it okay um and then it will do a, a sphere overlap on actors see um who it gets in that sphere and that it applies damage to that sphere so it applies this damage grenade so let's go back to the start and let's actually find out what the gameplay tag is called for, for or which which gameplay tag it plays for the gameplay queue so under your grenade let's see the gameplay tag is the weapon grenade detonate gameplay queue okay so let's go ahead and uh, copy this one and let's paste it oh let's create it first oh so you right click on it create variable gameplay tag compile and then you can paste it so this will invoke this burst gameplay queue on detonate and then let's actually create a radius variable so that's the radius of uh, the sphere uh, that will try to see if it overlaps with anyone to damage them so let's let's just put that at 300 so three me three meters radius so we'll check for all the pawns. We we could technically also like this this barrel itself, which is a dynamic object. So we could we could try to do damage other other barrels. Okay, now let's let's just create a gameplay effects context. Okay, and then let's create the variable for ignore actors. And everything else will keep pretty much the same for now. Uh, and we don't we don't need this uh, Niagara system trail 
Um, but let's still put a delay before destroying the actor so that the gameplay effect can be applied. So let's just put a delay node for 0.2 seconds. And so whenever this gets hit, just destroy it. Uh, I don't, we don't need this comet anymore. Okay. And then an, an interesting an interesting point or thing about this barrel is that it doesn't actually have a team. And so if it tries to apply, well, well you could always get the instigator, like the, the player who shot the barrel and it blows up. Like you could, you could choose that to be your instigator, but then that means that it won't hurt uh, their friendlies. So it won't hurt other players of your own team. Um, so what we're actually going to do, and which is similar to what they did for uh, the exploder content example, is that we're actually going to have the uh, players or the target apply damage to themselves. So let's change this. Let's let's replace this apply gameplay effect to target with apply gameplay effect to self. Which sounds a bit silly. But technically, it was our fault for being so close to a explosive barrel. Uh, but if you wanted the barrel to have a team, you could create in code uh, a new team, uh, call it something like environment, uh, and then have that environment be an enemy of everyone, so it can damage everyone. Or if if it's um, if it's the barrel that has an undefined team that hurts the pawns. In the damage execution, it will ignore it because its uh, attitude towards pawns is undefined, so it will not actually damage the pawns. Uh, so I will just also use the the grenade damage. Delay damage, okay. And then the context, and let's just move this one over here. Uh, the level. I will move it over here also. And one last step is that the context probably has the wrong owner. So instead of creating the gameplay effect context handle struct over here, we'll create it for every single uh, looped actor. So go ahead and unconnect this and let's move this over. Okay, all the way over here. Okay. And then you can also hook it up to this add hit result. So this this is useful for uh, the Q and also for the damage, like how much damage you'll get. Okay, so I will just connect this over here. And then this this one can actually use that one directly. And then we are making a context out of the uh, ability system from the the looped actors. So let's move this over a bit to the left. And let's hook this in. We can delete that, that. And then also the uh, apply game play ability to self would not be your ability system. It will actually be the uh, actor that was hit and their ability system. Go ahead and delete this. And let's clean up a little bit. And yeah, we're almost ready. Let's actually go ahead and create our own gameplay effect. So it's separate from the grenades damage. Let's say you want the explosive barrel to deal more damage than the uh, grenade does. So navigate to the gameplay effect which is under whoop, under shooter core content weapons grenade and it's over here so grenade damage and let's let's copy that over to our uh, explosive barrel let's okay I'll just click here let's paste it over here okay and then actually let's rename this gameplay effect to damage explosive barrel 
And then let's actually add a new damage type for the explosive barrel. So just scroll down and actually under your execution, this is where the damage happens. So let's say we'll, we'll say like 300 damage. That's a lot of damage, but it's also in a curve, which you can also duplicate and have it be unique. Uh, so I will just copy and paste that over here. So curve, and then this one will be explosive, explosive grenade damage. Okay, and then our damage explosive barrel will use this curve. Oh, that didn't seem like it worked. Ah, okay, now it's fine. Uh, so this one, you could always preview. So at, oh, so at a zero radius, it'll do 300 damage. At the full radius or the full curve, it'll do zero damage. So that's a damage fall off. And when you open that up, you'll see that it's a nice damage fall off. Okay, so let's go back here. So under the tag, under the gameplay effect asset tag, uh, to, to be able to filter out this damage in the future, let's say someone's someone's has uh, immunity to explosive ba uh, barrels for some reason. Uh, so let's, let's just change this one to uh, have a new damage type. So let's add this one damage type, add a sub tag, and then let's call this one explosive barrel. Okay. And let's do, let's uh, clear off the one for the grenade and then compile. And then we still have to use this in our gameplay effect. So open up your explosive barrel. And then instead of the grenade damage, search for the explosive barrel damage. Okay, so let's let's start placing a few barrels and see what happens. I'll try to put some close to the enemies so we can see that it hurts them and hurts everyone on the team. So let's just go ahead and play. All right, I, as you can see, it hurt me. And it will hurt the other team also. All right, so the closer you are to it, the more damaged it does. But uh, funny enough, it does show uh, like as though you killed you or Hubert killed Hubert because they are the ones who did the damage to themselves. So you'll you'll see it as this versus that. So that that would be fixed if you had um, like a, a name for the barrel, like barrel killed this person or if you had a, a team name I, as a last note. What you could do uh, is let's just go ahead and change the the uh, barrel's health. So every hit is about 16 damage. Um, so let's just have it be set to um, 30. So after after one hit, it will still be alive, but after two, it will die. So let's go ahead and do that. That's 30 health. And now when we play, you'll have to hit it twice. Or sometimes your gun will miss and you'll have to hit it more. Okay, so uh, I'll just go, I'll just go over the blueprint just to make sure, uh, to, to make it clear exactly what we have in here. Okay, so in our begin play, we pre-stream the grenade explosion, which is a node from the grenade blueprint. And then we wait for uh, damage to be applied and then on applied we check if our health is lower than zero and if so then we detonate which reminds me I forgot to set our uh, blueprint to replicate so I will just press that uh, it does repl replicate oh yeah the the main one replicate so this uh, replicates. Okay. And then 
yeah okay so when you detonate you execute this only once because you don't want it to uh, detonate more than once especially when it's uh, delayed to die um, so whenever it detonates it it uh, it does a gameplay cue so your explosion and then if you have authority it ch it checks to see if it hit any pawn in your radius and then for each of them it just does some some traces just to see if it's valid uh, if the damage wasn't blocked by something else and then you create a uh, gameplay effect context and oh yeah we forgot to plug that in so let's plug that in okay and then uh, it will the effect level will clamp depend depending on how far you were from the center of the damage or in your radius yeah thanks thanks for watching and have fun with the exploding barrels <laughs>